Scott Stevens. I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. Chemtrails are a key element in the whole thing because they're obviously a way of uh, putting a highly reflective material into the atmosphere. With cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. The more we see these trails in the sky, the less rain we get. Virtually all scientific data, even from the proponents of geoengineering, state clearly saturating the atmosphere with particulates will create drought. Much has been made of this issue of damage from precipitation. If the issue is understanding the climatic response, which was I think most of where this was going, and it's exactly where the precipitation gets higher and lower. There will be monsoon failures during that period, there will be huge hurricanes. It's likely to cause some damage in some places. Global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns, and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. Just seeding can be pretty effective for the clouds we explored, but the interactions between seeding and precipitation in the form of drizzle are really complex. So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, the weather engineering, whether it's scalar, ionic, or organ, or the chi of the atmosphere, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal before jumping on the chemtrail bandwagon was i needed a motive without a motive you can't say what they're doing and why they're doing it you have to have a motive uh, what are the derivatives or products that uh, commercial hedgers would use such as an insurance company or an energy company to hedge risk that's associated with weather precipitation or a hurricane or general heating days is what they're basically called. Certain temperatures or you know, higher temperatures are going to associate with uh, more energy. So they're going to want to hedge that risk. If you can structure a product where you say, okay, I'm going to buy insurance against it raining more than 10 inches in this area. If my risk is, say, like, say a million dollars, but I'm insuring for $10 million, 